today I'm going to share with you a discovery that I think is going to change the way that AI has been done today. Hope you enjoy. So let's start at the basics. How does modern AI and ML work today? Traditionally, in supervised learning, you have training data and testing data. You have millions of rows of these training data, and you need to get labeled data. That way, on your testing data, you can predict the future. The question is, how do you get this testing data to make these predictions? Right now, when companies or people want to do machine learning, to get this training data, essentially, what you can either do is not label it at all. This is actually like 99% of the use cases, and these projects primarily fail. You can label everything manually in a spreadsheet. You can build internal tooling to label data. Or you can go to a team of external manual data annotators. If you go to a team of external manual data annotators, not only can it take months to years to get your data labeled, have hundreds or thousands of annotators combining forces, it costs millions of billions of dollars, and the labels you get in return aren't necessarily accurate. About 10% of data is labeled that has label errors. It's such an awful process, it gives people headaches. You see that? <laughs> Headache. Um, but there's really two main limitations for why things are still predominantly being done manually. The first is the complexity of domain-specific use cases. And the second is in regards to you know, the technological limitations of traditional AI solutions. And I'm going to share you today how those barriers are slowly uh, dissipating. So it started about five years ago, where transformers were created. Uh, the paper attention is all you need. And recently, you know, there's been a lot of hype on these large language models, multi-billion parameter models that cost a ton of money to train. I'm particularly interested in few-shot learning, which really arrived at the advent of GPT-3. But recently, there's been this kind of wave of smaller models that are specialized at, you know, predicting data and labels with just a few labeled data points. The idea is you only have a few rows of data in your training data. And from there, you're able to predict the rest. Obviously, this makes a lot of sense for businesses, as it saves them a lot of time and money. So if you're able to do it accurately, it makes a lot of sense. It's a no-brainer. So the question is, how do you accurately do this? So essentially, about a few months ago, there's this new model that came out from the team at Hugging Face Intel Labs that's called SetFit, where they go and benchmarked a lot of these new results on models that are way smaller, so you can actually run them on your own computer way cheaper, and after just a few labels for certain simple tasks like text classification, you're able to get 85 to 90 degree percent accuracy, and this is benchmarked on like data sets and published. The idea is you can use this new technology called a Siamese network, where rather than kind of needing millions of rows of data, you can just kind of do a similarity score. It's called the buzzwords are contrastive learning or adaptive learning based on pixels, and you can use this technology that you only really need a few labeled data, and you can predict the rest. So right, in terms of strains, you know, really high accuracy with just a few labels, not millions of rows. You know, really cheap, you can run on your own computer, and really fast and small. But obviously, it has weaknesses too, you know, just like every model. The data distribution can really affect its performance, you know, and it really can only work for, you know, simple tasks of text classification. I'd say, you know, few shot learning is just getting started, and there's this whole domain of tasks that people want labeled data for today. Not like yesterday, but today. These can be named entity recognition, co-referencing, part of speech tagging, entity linkage, right? Text classification is just the start of this. But as things progress, there's going to be these new waves of few-shot learning algorithms that are going to pervade the entire modem of the way we get labeled data and the way that we actually do our AI projects. One area I'm particularly interested in is few-shot hierarchical classification where we have these kind of classes, these subclasses, and these sub-subclasses, and need label data for all these kind of categories. I'll take a step back. The way that people you know, think of AI in theory is via a model-centric approach. The idea here is you have a few different models, maybe Naive, Bayes, SatFit, BERT. You have a static data set. And on this static data set with text and labels, you make a prediction on all these models and compare you know, your accuracy, your precision, your recall, which works. OK. But in the past 10 or 15 years, there's been this shift to what I call data-centric AI. This is a buzzword that people talk about. When they're talking about iterating on their data with a fixed model. So essentially, we can take a naive maze model, and we're going to add more rows of data. Maybe we're getting new user data from Twitter. We're adding more categories. We want to add more categories. We want to delete data that's bad. And the idea is, like, as you iterate on your data, you know, 
we keep a model fixed and we're able to learn how to make our data better to get better results. But I'd say, you know, all these kind of data-centric approaches have this core fundamental issue, which is runs in scalability. In manual labeling, when you have to add new data or add new categories, you can imagine a team of manual annotators labeling everything from scratch again, every single time business requirements change, which is awful. Uh, programmatic labeling, even though it addresses some of these issues, essentially doesn't really translate too well between different verticals. So if you have programmatic labels for finance and you want to try something in healthcare, your programmatic labels will be need, need to be fundamentally different. And as a result, I'd say right now, to be practical, 90% of AI projects fail. And as a result, like only one one thousandth or less of that of the data is actually, like, that's required to be labeled is actually labeled today. So there really needs to be a new way that you, we can actually label data to actually make a lot of these projects succeed. Because right now, it's not working. There needs to be a new way of doing the AI. I'll call it anode-centric AI. And the idea is, as you iterate on your data, as you add new rows of data, as you add new categories, as you delete data, as you mark features as important, as you annotate on a GUI, we're able to not only iterate on the data, but we're able to iterate on the model at the same time. So you can imagine hundreds or thousands of models all running on conjunction after each row of data is annotated to make the best predictions across domains. As we iterate on the data, we also iterate on the model. Essentially, how this works in practice is you can kind of think of an ensemble model API on endpoint. And on annotation, when you press, or on category when you change, we feed that asynchronously to a series of weak model learners. And all these models are coming together and making inferences on their own time. And when that's done, that's passed into a merger that combines the result of all these models together. And essentially, the idea is as you label n more items, we're able to learn which of these models are better and which of these models are work. So every model is a weak learner, but you'll be able to learn which ones are stronger for a specific use case or domain, which is huge. Because it essentially what it will do is enables a task that's not only been able to be done in like the legal sector for contracts, to also be able to be done in the finance sector for SEC documents, to be able to done in the healthcare sector for PII and PHI documents, all in one product. And if you want your own model customizable to a specific domain, just like a plug and play, you add it in to this architecture, and it works seamlessly, which is insane. Because now, this kind of 1 1,000th of data that was labeled before, you can actually access this new modem of data without labeling everything manually, with just a few data points. And I'd say, to close, the algorithm in itself really is just an algorithm. I think there's a lot of instances of, of great technology that's been applied in theory, but it's just been research. And really the key is to build this and turn it into a product where after you label a few data points, we can label the rest. And we've done a lot of thinking on how this could work. You know, the first idea is you can upload any sort of text data. You can do decomposition of your data to convert into like a spreadsheet. You can add programmatic labeling functions such as keywords, heuristics, or entities. And the idea is after you do that, you know, you can actually begin training your model. You can sort by the edge cases. So you're really sorting by the items people are uncertain of. And as you label, a few of these data points, we're able to learn the rest, and we're able to understand the context of words. The word run has over like 500 meanings, right? A programmatic label won't fit through that. So the idea is, you know, there's a lot of ideas out there, and I think that using this product, or using this kind of approach, we won't need to label everything manually. The human will still be involved, they'll just be in the loop, and they're an essential part of the process. And to close, you know, I think AI is, is gonna change the world, um, and it's really important that the people that are actually working here take into account, you know, what's best for humans too. Label data will enable a lot of these great AI projects to happen. But it's really important that not only the people with the biggest brains are involved, but the people with the biggest hearts. Cheers. <laughs>